Hello and welcome in RCF with the part 5 of the video tutorial about RDNet 3.0. In this part, we'll manage the subwoofer configuration and master functions, and we'll see the tools that RDNet has to do it. We have a system with 8 sub 9007AES, and one of the best configurations for subwoofer is a straight array. For example, let's do a straight array of 8 sub as we see in our project and look at the simulation done using his Focus 3. We can see the simulation of the SPL in the audience area. This type of arrangement tends to concentrate most of the energy available on the perpendicular to the array center, uncovering the lateral areas. Physically bending the array, it is possible to control its polar pattern, ensuring a more uniform sound coverage throughout the listening area. To solve this problem, we have to move the subs in order to build an arc, but in most venues it is impossible because the stage does not allow a displacement like that. The solution is doing it electronically by adding a different delay proportionally from the side to the center of our rows of subs, achieving a virtual curve. Ardinet can be helpful for this. To make a new curve function, select with the mouse all the subs, Right-click a subs and select Function, New, Curve. Now, set the angle that we want to achieve, for example, 120 degrees, that will be the horizontal coverage angle of the entire array. The algorithm will calculate the delay to be applied to each subwoofer to get the right coverage. Now we have to set the distance between two subwoofer axes. The algorithm needs this data to calculate the delay values. Remember that to reach a good result, all subwoofers should be arranged on a straight line and equally spaced by the exact value here specified. The distance between two subwoofer axes affect also the maximum operating frequency of the entire array. This value reduces the maximum frequencies, as you can see. Spacing the sub of 2 meters, the maximum frequencies in which the sub will work is 80 Hz. Our crossover point is 60 Hz, so we are sure that in the range of our subs, the lobes in the audience will not appear. As you can see, the simulation of the curved array is much better than the previous one without the function. See the picture without function and with function. Now, the sound coverage of the considered frequencies is much more uniform in the listening area, with a consequent improvement in the sound reproduction quality. Another useful function regarding the subwoofer configurations is the end fire function. Let's delay the previous curve function to return with subs in factory defaults and place them in two rows of four subs. Let me spend a couple of words regarding the end fire and gradient configurations. In the end fire, the front row will be delayed to virtually overlap the rear row. This way allows to get the maximum sound pressure in the audience and the cancellation of a part of the sound spectrum behind the speakers, achieving a sort of cardioid behavior but only around a certain frequency. Typically, the frequency wavelength at which the cardioid effect is maximum is four times the distance between the two rows of speakers. Add this function to our system is very simple. First, arrange the sub in two rows. Be careful to do a proper alignment among them. Select the sub starting from the left rear one to the right front one. You can see in the icon of the speaker a number that means the order with which the subs have been selected. It is crucial to be sure that the selection of the speaker is done in this way, otherwise the function might give wrong results. So, right-click on one subs and select Function, New and Fire. We have to set the number of rows, in our case two, as in most cases, and of course the distance between the two rows. The work is done, and the front sub now are delayed properly, as you can see in the summary. Look at the address of the front rows of subs. It is 
138. Open the summary that is a sort of global view of all the information of the speakers of the project with their own setting. And you can see that the front row with the sub 5, 6, 7 and 8 are delayed. Well, leaving the subs in the same place, this ordinate function also allows, with just a click, to switch from the end fire to the gradient configuration. In this way, it is possible to compare in real time the performance of the two different configurations with obvious advantages when optimizing some reinforcement systems. Furthermore, on the stage, you will be able to feel the difference in the cardioid behavior of the two different configurations. Subwoofer in gradient configuration have a polar pattern comparable to that of directional microphones. This means, unlike the end fire configuration, that the cancellation will be present at all the frequencies sent to the speakers. Conversely, compared to the end fire, in the gradient configuration the rear row is delayed, but in this case its face is 180 degrees. Just clicking in the gradient function to switch easily between the end fire and gradient. When the need is to avoid excessive low frequencies on the stage, the gradient configuration is better, while in cases where the frontal sound pressure need to be maximized, the end fire configuration is preferable. In our case, I prefer to use the gradient configuration because of the rear building in our demo area that would reflect a lot of energy in the lows with the random phase, ruining the system's frequency response. Now, with our subs properly configured, we have to check for the phase between the clusters and the group of subs, and probably the sub will need to be delayed because of the different distances between the front of house position and subs and front of house position and tops. In this example, I'm taking the front of house position as point in which the system will be aligned, but there are other cases where this point will be different according with the needs of the venue. Anyway, to delay our subs, we can use a master function. The master function allows the gain, delay and phase relative value control of the selected objects on the workspace. Select with the mouse our subs, right-click and select Function New Master. Now we have the possibility to delay the entire group of subs, keeping the gradient and fire or curved configuration to go in phase with the clusters. Also, we can adjust the level of the subs and reverse the phase if it is needed. I will add 3 meters of delay as starting point, then I will check for the phase with appropriate measurements. To finish the job, I suggest to do another master function, selecting all the speaker to manage the entire system level and mute status. We can give the proper names at our functions, clicking the function button in the toolbar. We can see our gradient function for sub, master for all sub, and master for the entire system. The work is done. Now we have our project matched with the system with all the tools that we'll need to fine-tune it. Normally, this work is up to the sound engineer that eventually will ask at the PA manager some changes according with his needs. That's all for the part five. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.